Thanks. Question number two, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Transport and asks, does he stand by his statement on TVNZ's close-up on 3 May 2010 regarding Kiwi rail workers that, quote, there will be lots of work for these guys. There's no doubt about that because they do a lot of things well and there's a big rolling stock replenishment and replacement exercise that's coming down the pipeline, end quote. If not, why not? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Um, Mr Speaker, yes I do and I also stand by the rest of that quote that says you can't make these things conditional to the deal. The point I was making about Kiwi Rail a few weeks ago is that the reality is this rail company has been treated like a Cinderella in this country for a long, long time with all sorts of political things about what it should do and what it shouldn't do which doesn't Order. necessarily Order. make commercial Order. seats for the Order. company itself to proceed Order. with. Sorry, Mr Speaker. The question was a fairly simple question, just asked whether he, the Minister stood by his statement and he went on to say he stood by the rest of it, but I sensed then he started to get into some political comment that was not actually required by the question. Well, I'll hear the Minister... No, it wasn't, um, Mr General Speaker, that was the actual total quote. I was just reading back elements of the rest, the rest of the quote from the... So it was taken out of context and I thought I would read the rest of the quote, Mr Speaker. I apologise to the member if I, I stopped him, but I think he had... Uh, read a fair part of the... Uh... Mr Speaker, speaking of the point of order, there's a very important part of the quote which I hadn't been able to get to, uh, which is pretty relevant to the member's question. Well, the question asked if he stood by this statement, and if he didn't stand by it, then he was asked, why not? And uh, the question could actually be answered yes, but of course ministers are allowed to indicate where a quote is taken out of context. But, you know, we don't go on reading forever. But I'll let the Minister finish his, uh, on this occasion, let him finish the... Thank you, Mr point. Speaker. And I believe strong... The, the remainder was, I believe strongly, Mr Speaker, that if we're going to turn Kiwi Rail around, and it's a big turnaround project, then we actually have to let them make the commercial decisions that they do need to make. Dr Russell Norman. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister regret the fact that, as a Minister of the Crown, he effectively gave these workers a guarantee that they would have a job, and they may have made certain commitments to mortgages and so forth, and then today, 70 workers have lost their job in spite of the assurance from the Minister that their jobs were secure. The Hon. Stephen Choice. Uh, no, Mr. Speaker, and I, no, Mr Speaker, and I don't think the member's characterisation is at all fair, as I indicated by reading the rest of that quote. I would certainly acknowledge the uncertainty and concern that the affected workers will have, as, a, as occurs whenever these sorts of changes take place in any organisation. However, it is important that we let Kiwi Rail make their own commercial decisions if it has the chance to turn around and become successful. We can't place requirements on Kiwi Rail that we don't place on any other New Zealand company. Dr Russell Norman. If the Minister believes that it is important to give Kiwi Rail the freedom to make their own commercial decisions, can he confirm did he or any other ministers discuss with the Chair of Kiwi Rail the implications for any of our free trade agreements were the contracts to end up with an overseas company versus a New Zealand company? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I can confirm that I did not. Dr Russell Norman. Order, Mr Speaker. This is a point of order. A, a point of order. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, sorry, Mr Speaker. The question was, did he or any other ministers... Um, he answered the question with regard to himself. Uh, is he aware of any other ministers? Well, he's entitled, to, uh, he's entitled to answer it for himself, and I don't think he can answer for other ministers. Uh, supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In light of his comments that Kiwi Rail do do a lot of things well and there's a big rolling stock replenishment, why then is Kiwi Rail losing 70 jobs today from its hillside workshop in Dunedin? The Honourable Stephen Choice. Uh, Mr Speaker, Kiwi Rail um, has a massive number of investments scheduled over the next 10 years as we seek to turn that organisation around as part of the $4.6 billion turnaround plan. So there is a huge amount of work across that organisation, uh, which I would note has 4,200 staff or thereabouts. Uh, but again, it's very important that we allow Kiwi Rail to make their commercial decisions about individual elements of their organisation. We do not place the sort of requirements the member seems to be suggesting on any other New Zealand company. If we want to make Kiwi Rail successful, and I suspect the Greens do because they're big fans of rail, then we have to allow them to get on and make their appropriate decisions. 
Uh, the Honourable David Parker, supplementary. Can't the Minister see the inconsistency between his government's refusal to even allow Kiwi Rail to tender to build rolling stock and the government's $35 million subsidy in this year's budget for farm irrigation? And was he involved in any cost-benefit analysis to show whether investing that money in hillside workshops would have been better than a further subsidy to the farming sector? The uh, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I reject the member's suggestion that we did not uh, say to Kiwi Rail that they could not bid for the work. Right. They have bid for some work, and the other work that they didn't bid, they make their own decision. The reality is, Mr Speaker, is that the Greens and Labor are playing politics with this issue. They had one big train contract when they were in government, and they gave it to Korea to build the Ma Tangi trains. So in opposition, it's suddenly all different, and I think we can call that petty politics and crocodile tears. Dr Russell Norman. <clears throat> it certainly wasn't us. <laughs> with, regard to, with regard to the Minister's... With regard to the Minister's approach that it is a singular commercial decision for Kiwi Rail, has the government considered the whole of economy approach in this issue, and has he hence looked at the Burl report, which looked at whole of economy benefits, were these contracts to be actually built in New Zealand? The benefits aren't just to Kiwi Rail, but to all of New Zealand. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, um, the Bill report, as I think uh, we discussed in this House at the time, had a number of large um, d issues with it in terms of the assumptions it was able to draw. And what the member seems to be suggesting is rejecting the whole principle of trade and specialisation to allow countries to get ahead. The reality is that every country specialises in certain areas and trades with other countries. It seems to be suggesting a return to Fortress New Zealand which is sort of fine for him, but I suspect it wouldn't be good for any other New Zealander. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. If the government really believes that it should be left to the market and for trade and specialisation, why does the government have such an inconsistent approach? On the one hand, Kiwi Rail tenders the contract to whoever. On the other hand, when it comes to intensive agriculture and irrigation, the government has very, very large subsidies to that industry. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. <laughs> well, Mr Speaker, I don't see the connection, although obviously Mr Parker and Dr Norman got together at lunchtime and cooked that one up. I don't see the connection at all, Mr Speaker. What I can tell you, once again, it is, is very important that politicians stop making political demands on what is a struggling organisation so we can turn around and make it a success right. in New Zealand. That's right. Question number three, the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker.